the coming days or weeks, whatever. The moment Gon wakes up from his snoring, it will be the start of an adventure or nightmare, whatever. Letting out a shaky sigh, I carefully moved away from my twin and went to the bathroom. I scrubbed myself religiously. Who knows when I could get a good shower again. Then, I thank God and every powerful deity out there watching me on the fact that puberty hasn't hit me yet. Shaving will be bothersome in the middle of nowhere where I'm fighting or hiding for my life and guns. After drying, I took out my ensemble. It was a good stress relief. Something that I had control over. Something to be happy about in this new life of mine. At least I can play dress up. Yeah? Doing a happy twirl again, I took out the small pack that contained the various knives I collected for years. I fastened it around my waist and my whole outfit was complete. Opening the zip, I checked my collection of folded knives and pocket knives. I bought them secretly over the years and practiced with them. They felt like my true friends. After all, they've seen me bleed, seen me cry and seen me break down when I get too stressed out and freak out every time I remember something about this world. Next, I bandaged my arms and strapped on my weapons. The weapon straps the blacksmith gave me were dark brown and complemented my outfit well. The knife sheath around my arms were less conspicuous since the sheath was located on the inside of my arm. But these are hunters we are looking at. Of course, they'll notice. I wondered briefly if I should change my outfit. But I won't be Ray anymore. You're not Ray anyway. I turned and checked one of the knife holster wrapped tightly around my right thigh. This one was facing outwards and you can definitely see the handles. Anyone close enough will be able to see I'm armed. Heavily armed. So much for blending in. Pouting, I dragged my feet to my dresser. But I planned my outfit for ages. It's perfect. Shut up. Do you want them to challenge you or something? You can't let them see you. I'll be with Gun all the time. No one looks at young, innocent maybe not, but not a lot will take me too seriously, right? And I'm good at blending in. Not with that outfit. I grabbed my head and stifled a groan. I can't believe I'm talking to myself now. I already packed black sleeveless shirt and black leggings in my bag. I'll be wearing them just in case I soil myself. It wasn't as creative as my re-inspired garb but it's something I can use to encourage myself not to pee in my pants. Jen? Whoa, you're ready now. I turned to Gon. Gon, how do I look? I pirouetted. You look good. You look really cool and pretty. Thank you. I looked down inside. But do you think I should change into something less weird? Gon rubbed his sleepy eyes and tilted his head to the side. Why? You look fine to me. Yeah? But, what about to others? I don't want to attract too much attention. Gon chuckled. His familiar eyes glittering in amusement. What I asked? I feel like he was laughing at me. Comma. What? Jin shook his head and bit his lip as if attempting hide a smile. Gon. I growled. You look like you're going to war. That's the hunter exam though, isn't? He shrugged and looked thoughtful for a moment. Dunno. Probably. Of course he doesn't know. I walked towards him and sat on the bed. He stared at me, expectantly. I unstrapped the pack hanging just above my hip then opened it between us. I heard Gon gasp. Ji Jin. Emptying my bag, I laid my knives on the bed. How many do you have? SH. I glared at him and moved my head to the side, towards Mito's room. Gon bowed in apology and whispered. How many? I'm bringing only ten. His eyes went wide. Only ten, he repeated in an are you crazy tone. I want you to have one, or two or three, as many as you want with you at all times or eyes met. Identical, one surprised, another was determined. You've tried before, haven't you? You're good at them. But I don't know why you prefer that fishing rod of yours. Hey! I caught the lord with that rod. Humph. Anyway, I finished lining them up. These are pocket knives. You can use them as throw knives, stabbing knives, slashing knives, cutting knives, whatever. They're light, too. Choose one or how many you want. Gon gulped and took a deep breath. He hovered his hand over them. He picked up a spear point knife and then slowly removed its sheath. Spear pointed knife. That's simple and very good, gone great for throwing and stabbing. Throwing and stabbing. Do you want another one? He looked at me and nodded. Two is always better than one. He said with a smile. I smiled back. Yeah? It is? Suggestion. HM. Here. Pocket and folding knife. Keep it in your pocket. Okay. He nodded. Do you have the first aid kit I gave you? Yep. In my bag, sis. I nodded while packing up. Good. Oh. And before I forget. Here I handed him a small vial. Pepper spray. You said and keep it always within reach, brother. There's Petus everywhere I told him the grave truth. We looked at each for a moment. I kissed him on the forehead before scrambling away to check my outfit again on the mirror, twirling left and right. Aren't they a little showy? You look beautiful, sister. I kissed grandmother Abe in the forehead. She squeezed my holstered arm and then held my cheek, patting it gently. The old woman was always calm and smiling. We'll come home after the exam, grandmother. Stay healthy and alive to welcome us, yeah. She let out scratchy but hearty laugh. She slapped my cheek a little harder. We will be waiting every day for your return then. She lowered her voice. Take care of yourself, Jin. Don't be too reckless. Ha! <laughs> reckless? Me? Nat. I wrapped an arm around her shoulder and squeezed. Then, I approached Mito. That boy, leaving without me. 
Trader I covered my eyes from the glare of the sun and could just make up gone running and waving at us below the hill. Oil gone. Wait up. I shouted at him. Jeez, I murmured then turned to say my goodbye to Mito. Only to freeze when I found her in tears. Jin. She whispered then hugged me. I'm sorry, auntie. Mito laughed and wiped her tears with a sad smile. Then, she unwrapped her arms for me to hold my face. Listen her hands tightened. Stay. Together. All the time. Okay. You can't separate. That's the plan, auntie. Her face crumpled again and hugged me once more. I ignored how soft her chest were. This is a dramatic moment. Be serious. Then, she pushed me and took a step back. Go. If you stay any longer, you'll miss the ship and I don't think I can be sad about that. I let out a small laugh. Of course, she won't. See you later, auntie. Granny. Then, I ran. When I was far enough, I turned over my shoulder for one last look. I could just make out Mito's silhouette waving at us. Jin. Coming. I'm going to be the best hunter in the world. Once I'm the best hunter, I'll come back. I closed my eyes tightly and gritted my teeth. Hearing it in my head and hearing it for real is a little creepy. I crossed my arms and rubbed the goosebumps on my skin. The memories regarding the last time I rode a ship was one thing, living in one of my visions were another, and the fact that I feel a little sick, is just fucking awful. Someone chuckled dryly. Best hunter, kid doesn't respect us. I gripped my arms tighter. Every year, thousands of applicants join the hunter's exam, only a handful are selected someone so helpfully said. God turned to me. Are you okay? I smiled at his terse expression. Yeah? I'll be fine. Just wondering where all my precious swagger went. Then, I looked around. Instantly, my eyes caught him. The blonde guy of my visions wore a blue and yellow tabard over a white long-sleeved shirt and trousers. He was looking out to the sea with a calm expression. I swallowed and searched for another guy, the one in the black suit. My lips twitched. He was reading a Playboy magazine with a funny smirk on his face. I followed Gun and we watched as a young sailor got bullied by his fellow shipmates. I mostly just watched Gun's reaction. He climbed down the stairs to help the young man. The door below me opened and a rotund man who smelled heavily of alcohol came out. Captain? I wondered. Hey losers. Don't slack off. Yep. He's the captain all right. Hey, hey, sir. I leaned and propped my head with my hand and my elbows resting on the wood railing. Sleepily watching Gun as he conversed the captain. Turning away from them towards Whale Island. The wind suddenly picked up, sending salty droplets of water on my nape and a smell of a stronger saltier breeze to my direction. God, please tell me there will be no storm tonight, I thought as I look out to the peaceful sea. They say the sea is deceitful. One moment she's calm, the next she's raging. Like a woman on PMS. As if to answer, the seagulls squawked and danced wildly overhead and I immediately saw a ball of green and black climbing up the net up to the top of the mast. A big storm is coming. I could tell by the smell. My jaw dropped. My intuition says so as well but I could always be wrong. But hearing them confirmed by gone means it's really going to happen. Oh god. The storm. Calm down. You've low of this. Now, open your bag and get out that rope. Then find somewhere quiet and secure. You can do this. That night, just as the sky seemed to rumble and roar every few seconds and the waves are getting angrier and angrier, I told gone I needed the toilet. Do you want me to come with you? No. I'll be fine. Wait here. Okay. All right then he agreed, a bit hesitant. I smiled tightly at him, gave him a quick kiss and left quickly. I need somewhere with good ventilation and quiet. There's too many people in there. So many scents intermingling with each other. It's awful. How does Gon stomach it? Gon will be fine, right? I swayed and I held myself still against the wall. I can't let myself be sick. Not when Gon looks so alive out there. Damn it. Miss, what are you doing here? Oh, Orp. The sailor held both of his hands on his mouth. I walked past him. Somewhere quiet, with good ventilation, cool and with easy access to water. I spotted the door. Water was slowly seeping through the gap between it and the floor. As I closed our distance, the sound of rain splattering on the wood grew louder and it was colder. Opening it felt like facing an ice demon. The wind bellowed at my ears and rain pricked my skin like tiny needles. But for some reason, the cool rain felt good. Just as I was stepping out, my rational mind interrupted. Won't it be better if I stay inside? If everyone's inside, it must be better to stay there. Then, my evil part answered, sounding really persuasive and evil. You'll never know until you tried. I hung my head limply from my shoulders. Why do I talk to myself all the damn time? I concentrated my aura on my feet to help steady myself and treaded carefully on the ship's deck towards the main mast. For some reason, the captain hasn't decided to set up his sails. I shrugged. Can't really tell a captain how to do his job. The wind quietened a little. I wasted no time and leapt up, climbing almost effortlessly through the ropes leading up to the mast's tower. I unbound the rope and tightly wrapped it around the mast and me. Once secure, I sat cross-legged. I wish not get electrified here. What a bad way to die. I closed my eyes and sighed at the nice feel of the cold rain, quickly soaking me to the bone. I wondered for the second or third time if this was a bad idea but then again, I was already here, and I just knew that I'll get sick in that small room filled with all the men. They smelled horrid and the room was too small. Not ventilated well. No open windows. 
The rain started to hurt. An idea popped into my mind and I felt my heart accelerate at it. Concentrating again, I let my aura out of my body and slowly let it envelop me like a velvet blanket. Instantly, the raindrops didn't hurt anymore and I stopped getting wet. Ooh ah, nice. Can it protect me from thunder strikes? Haha. <laughs> Hello. Someone out there. That doesn't mean I want to test it on me. Thank you? I opened my eyes and watched as the ship and I danced with the waves. Oh, my god. I exclaimed when it all began. It was like being on a ride and as if there was a switch, the ride started. I realized how everything relaxed for a moment, allowing me to gain my position up here until everything went to throwing mode. The sky was dark and forbidding while the ocean looks like it wants to hurl us towards the sky. A flash of red and lightning bolted through the heavens as if Zeus was threatening to stab Poseidon's sea. I wondered again if Poseidon was the sea or if the sea was his armor and he is down below. My eyes widened and I felt my stomach drop when I realized that the darkness in front of us was a huge wave, not the night. And are those, fish? I stiffened as I started feeling the rain again after my protective shroud of ore dispersed momentarily in my shock. I took a deep breath and entered my own subconscious. I mentally spread my cards into a line on an imaginary table, their XX mark facing up. Today, I heard Gon say the exact words I knew he'd say. The blonde guy and the suit and tie guy appeared. They were in the same room as Gon at the moment. What's supposed to happen now? I flipped the card and saw an image of Gon in the air above the waters. He was holding someone's hands. That someone being the guy I caught a glimpse of earlier. Behind him, the two other guys held his feet whilst they held onto the boat on one hand. So my brother's going leap to his death, to be saved by those two guys. Is that how they become friends? I flipped the next card. It was a picture of a white-haired boy with purple eyes with a number 99 tag on his shirt, Gain's future best friend. Next card, I stilled. It was a man I don't know. His face was the face of terror as he watched his arms disappear into red, pink and white fragments. I picked up the card, examining the picture closely. For a second, I thought the colors beautiful until I remembered the man's predicament. I replaced the card on the table. The card screamed Hisoka. Another card, was a picture of a dark tunnel. Vague. Set down the sails. The water spout's gonna get us. Water spout? I opened my eyes again. From down below, I heard men shouting and grunting. The ship was still weaving through the stormy sea though the skies have quietened. I quickly untied the knot, my hands struggling a little because of how tight I tied it. Fuck, fuck, fuckity fuck. Come on. Katsuo-san. I looked up when I heard Gon's voice. Then, more desperately worked it on doing my knot. The moment I stood up, my breath caught in my throat and I can't help but scream. Gone. I jumped down and landed on top of a wooden beam. My adrenaline keeping me going. Gone. 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 I ran and momentarily slipped on the wet floor. Stopping at the edge of the ship, in between the two guys holding my brother, I leaned down. Gone. My brother held the unconscious guy. He smiled up brightly at me. I'm fine, sis. Exhaling a shuddering breath, my eyes refocused to the other two guys, holding my brother. They were looking at me. I held onto both the wrists, just in case their hands slipped. Help me pull them out. I hated the how small and high-pitched my voice was. The men came. S.O. Okay, miss. Let me. It's okay, miss. Here. Next thing I know, I was safely behind the group of men as they worked together to pull out the guys. The moment I saw Gon's hair, however, I pushed my way in again, grabbed him by the armpit and pulled him out. The other men reached out and took their mate with them while I was busy trying to breathe and checking my brother. Hey, are you okay? I asked, shakily. It came true. He really jumped. It was the exact, exact image I saw from the card. He nodded, his head in my trembling hands. I'm okay. Are you okay? You look pale. I scowled. You just jumped out to the ocean. I pointed at the slowly calming sea. What if they didn't catch you? What if you fell and I can't find you? You'll be shark bait right now. But they did catch me, Gon replied, happily, selfishly. I don't care about that. How reckless can you be? If you, I trailed off when my eyes fell onto the young sailor he saved. He was running towards us. I pulled back. Katsuo-san. Thank you Gon. You saved my life. I couldn't have done it, alone. I wouldn't have been able to do it without Kirapika and Liario. It's nothing, Liario said, laughing a little. The sailor bowed again. Thank you very much. Oddly feeling left out, I crossed my arms. I'll be leaving to my station, now. I apologize for my behavior, Liario san the blonde guy, Kirapikas spoke. His voice was gentle and warm which surprised me a little. I know he looks like a girl but there was this air of distance and determination surrounding him. I am a little confused why I was expecting his voice to be colder. Clan wiped out.